Uh, welcome to the qualitative uh, mini workshop again. Uh, this is Peron Lee. I'm currently a PhD candidate in nuclear methodology at Indiana University Bloomington. Uh, today, we're going to talk about methodological reflections on doing research quality, specifically qualitative research online. Um, although it seems to be relative to nature and uh, in the, especially in these two years, because of the pandemic to, to conduct, carry out a research online. But before that, uh, scholars, qualitative researchers, they have some of the discussion around, um, for example, still entering into the field or entering the research side in person would be preferable because in the uh, field, you will be able to experience those things by yourself that you wouldn't be able to experience um, <clears throat> um, behind the screen. For example, you will feel the temperature, you feel the weather, you will be able to see those very micro elements that wouldn't be able to capture by the camera lens. Um, so you, you will also be able to interact with the people there, uh, which is more ideal for rapport building. Um, but that doesn't mean that uh, we most of or all of the uh, research should ideally be carried out in in person. There are also some of the more and actually more and more article and research that are done in online. Uh, as long as that fits your research angles or your research question and focus. Uh, also, scholars have argued that with the um, development of technology, uh, online methods are uh, starting to become equally valid and legitimate approaches to research. Uh, there are asynchronous ways and synchronous ways in doing these kind of study. For example, asynchronous ways could include an email interview, such as you are writing email back back and forth with your participants or you are using a discussion board that is not a, you know, like direct in time synchronous chatting way. It's like as if you are leaving some message there and then they click a later um, a response to those or, you know, just editing those things, this kind of a way. Um, <clears throat> Synchronous way, including telephones for interview, uh, even though technically it's not an online interview, but it's still a distance kind of a ways of doing research. Uh, and more, in, more and more uh, commonly, we are using video conference meetings such as Zoom, Skype, or other kind of software. Um, but uh, I still would like to remind uh, the researchers or uh, scholars that don't take it for granted. Uh, even though right now seems like everybody got a cell phone or a computer and internet at their place, it doesn't mean everybody have the equal access and knowledge to do or carry out or being uh, interviewed or, you know, being researched it, uh, in a, um, with a online format. So some of the concerns, including risk recruitment or safety or security issue, such as uh, a while ago, there are articles or news talking about the security issues, concerns with Zooms, um, ethical issues, of course, and technology or logistical issues. Uh, this happens all the time, the pause of the sounds, the videos, the back con internet connection. Um, this would belongs to technology issue and or rapper building. As I talk, uh, mentioned earlier that while you are in the field, you have more chains or those are tend to be more nature chains that you could, or opportunities where you could build the rapports organically with your participants or with the community. But when right now it seems like a purposeful, you have to arrange a specific kind of time and place and then you both have to log into the interview or the online Zoom, uh, online room 
to conduct a conver to to have a conversation. So rapper building becomes less nature in this way, but uh, still it's feasible. Um, these two scholars uh, they had concluded concluded an amazing uh, overview of some of the pros and cons or some of the restriction. For example, in their case, using Skype for interviews, uh, for recruitment, and uh, for the conduct of interview, of course, the advantage, including that you both side, both the researchers and participants, they are more flexible in arranging their time and space for conducting interview. Um, however, here is, here is some of the uh, common argument that has been argued by the uh, researchers that how technology may, may restrict us for recruiting or reaching out to some participants or some populations. For example, um, uh, for example, elders or because of the social economy, computers or internet may not be available for some of the population. So in that way, um, without the we, without this equipment or without the knowledge of using specific kind of a software, we may not be able to um, reach out to some um, some population. So that could be one of the potential concerns to think about. Um, logic, uh, technologically or logistically, some of the benefits, including the safety and security, even though earlier I, I mentioned that could also be a drawback here, but uh, most in many of the cases, while you are, for example, you are conducting an in online interview from your house or from your own home, it's considered ways of your research that researchers may have to uh, pre physically present in some of the research site where you don't know what will happen there or what's there, or you may have to visit the participants in person, but you know, you never know what you would expect or regarding this, you know, the, the environment uh, and, and you know, everything. So, I mean, safety concern, uh, here there are some of the advantages here. Um, Again, some other advantage, as we said earlier, that uh, time and place are more flexible. Uh, however, there are also some of the drawbacks. Uh, for example, as we say, um, the distance between the researchers and interview can make it easier for participants to draw drops out as they feel less commitment to the process than with the face-to-face -face interview. Um, that could be true. Uh, because it's just relatively easy now that you just by a simple click and you could say, well, I just don't feel like attending. But while you are in person interactions, although that could be a potential kind of uh, power too, but I mean, because you are working with a person that's sitting in front of you, so it's less easy for you for you or the for the participant to just say, "Okay, I'm leaving." Um, that could happen, but uh, it's the it will feel different <laughs> than in the online settings. Um, also, some other uh, consideration, including. Uh, Again, we've mentioned earlier about those uh, recording materials, the equipment, you have to, sometimes you have to have access, additional access to them. Um, some other things, technological issue we encounter very often, including bad internet connection, bad uh, sound quality, um, so and so forth. There are ethical issues. Uh, for example, uh, pro the advantage is that there is no need to obtain the phone numbers from the participants if, in the case, if you are using a telephone interview. Um, but 
you could also have uh, that I guess that also means you could poss possibly also do not need to obtain some of the very personal information. Um, and interviewees, again, that could be a pros and cons. Earlier, we say they don't want to be interviewed. They could just by a simple click and say, bye. And here, ethically, we also consider that as an advantage of interviewees or the participant. They have the charge or the power to control the whole interview flow. Um, so if they feel no longer want to be interviewed, uh, reluctant or want to withdraw, it's relatively easy. Uh, and anonymous, uh, I cannot, well, I always have difficulty pronouncing these words, forgive me, um, but you know, uh, to cover or to giving a fake name to the participant could be easily, uh, more easily insured. And then some of the backdrops here, considering for examples of uh, the inf informed consent verbally uh, can make the beginning of the interview very formal. I personally also experienced these while you already have a very uh, beautiful and wonderful energetic interactions and greetings at the beginning with the participant and suddenly after you've gone through everything and say, okay, I am sorry, but I have to invite you to uh, restate that you want to consent to these, these, you know, participating in this study and then have to click on recording and make sure I record that, they could kind of make everything a little bit awkward. So it just depends on how you handle these moments and the situation. <clears throat> and a, uh, let me see, participants uh, may feel uncomfortable being filmed in their own home. That also connects to our earlier uh, discussion about the safety where uh, it's pretty common that uh, an online interview can be done at home, although it could be safer, but you also have the privacy concern here. Earlier, we talked about the rapper building. Uh, in some of the cases, building rapper can be established just as well as in face-to-face -face interview. There's another, uh, another article, I believe I've also included in the materials here where you can see the reference list later, they have compared the face-to-face -face versus online interview, and they also made such uh, made the similar claims here. Um, <clears throat> some of the uh, some of the concern with the rapper building, uh, they have they they say here is with a reserved interviewee building rappers can be a little bit difficult. Um, audio and video. This happens again all the time uh, where when you have bad internet connection, you may have to just give up your video uh, and you only have audios. Um, absentees, um, so again, I guess it's pretty just again, pretty, pretty similar as what we've talked about previously where instead of you physically presented in the site that you made a commitment to go there. Now you just sit in front of the computer. And so if you ha happen to have any last minute incidents or you know things to catch up, then you, you feel less pressures to pressure to say, oh, I'm going to miss this interview. Um, so there could be, again, pros and cons. Uh, however, you know, uh, scholars, they also give some strategies or tips about how to deal with these things. Of course, starting with confirming a stable internet connection that we talk all the way about. Uh, if, uh, you could have bad video, audio connections, bad voices. Um, you could pause. So what they suggest here is you could um, you could 
try the internet connection beforehand with one of your friends. So then you make sure the internet is stable enough, the connection and the recording is good enough before you really do a official interview. And finding a quiet uh, room without distraction, that could also be uh, that could also be pretty important because uh, there are, I guess there are two concerns here. One is if you are ha you are sitting in a very noisy place, of course your audio quality will be pretty bad. Um, the other is uh, finding a quiet room. Oh yeah, I was I just lost my thinking track earlier, but now I get it. Um, Sometimes in the interview, you wanna make sure you really observe your participants or interviewees facial or body uh, movements. And that could possibly provide some hints for your future analysis. But while you are doing an online interview, you don't know what happened behind the screen. So when sometimes, for example, if the participant they are looking into some direction, or they're grabbing something, but you don't know what those things are. You don't, you, you, it's sometimes it's hard for you to make an interpretation of those movements. And so if, you know, you or the participants are sitting in very noisy uh, rooms with a lot of distraction, it is more likely these moments will happen. Um, and slowing down, clarify, and make sure you repeat a question and answers. These often happens when you have a bad video or audio connection. So you always want to make sure if, if for any moments you your you or participants um, screen or voices froze, you just want to make sure that uh, you clarified again or you repeated what you heard to ensure you don't miss any important moments or answer. Paying close attention to facial expressions. Um, yeah, that was a little bit echoing what I was saying earlier, but uh, that is also some rule of towns for doing interview that you wanna make sure that you really capture the things other than just what's being said. Uh, however, because right now, as you see, we, the, the only thing we have is our upper body. So then capturing facial expression now gets more important than, you know, trying to capture the whole body movement or the, you know, the body language. So here are some of the references and the suggested readings if you ever are interested in uh, diving into these uh, issues more, or if you are considering using online platforms uh, mediated for mediations for your uh, future study. Uh, and again, I look forward to seeing you in the next mini workshop and feel free to uh, reach out to us. Uh, you could buy I guess you could just simply Google and place the keyword IU research help and possibly you could be able to um, find our, our uh, website. And if you have any questions or you know, future suggestions, uh, interested in following us, <laughs> seeing what happened in our departmental program, uh, welcome. <laughs> and I will see you next time, bye.